The September 11 attacks were a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Islamic terrorist group Al-Qaeda on the United States on the morning of Tuesday, September 11, 2001. The attacks consisted of suicide attacks used to target symbolic U.S. landmarks. Four passenger airliners which all departed from airports on the U.S. east coast bound for California were hijacked by 19 al-Qaeda terrorists to be flown into buildings. Two of the planes, American Airlines Flight 11 and United Airlines Flight 175, were crashed into the north and south towers, respectively, of the World Trade Center complex in New York City. Within an hour and 42 minutes, both 110-story towers collapsed, with debris and the resulting fires causing partial or complete collapse of all other buildings in the World Trade Center complex, including the 47-story 7 World Trade Center tower, as well as significant damage to 10 other large surrounding structures. A third plane, American Airlines Flight 77, was crashed into the Pentagon in Arlington County, Virginia, leading to a partial collapse in the Pentagon's western side. The fourth plane, United Airlines Flight 93, initially was steered toward Washington, D.C., but crashed into a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, after its passengers tried to overcome the hijackers. In total, the attacks claimed the lives of 2,996 people and caused at least $10 billion in property and infrastructure damage and $3 trillion in total costs. Suspicion for the attack quickly fell on al-Qaeda. The United States responded to the attacks by launching the war on terror and invading Afghanistan to depose the Taliban, which had harbored al-Qaeda. Many countries strengthened their anti-terrorism legislation and expanded the powers of law enforcement and intelligence agencies to prevent terrorist attacks. Although al-Qaeda's leader, Osama bin Laden, initially denied any involvement, in 2004 he claimed responsibility for the attacks. Al-Qaeda and bin Laden cited U.S. support of Israel, the presence of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, and sanctions against Iraq as motives. Having evaded capture for almost a decade, bin Laden was located and killed by members of the U.S. military in May 2011. The destruction of the World Trade Center and nearby infrastructure caused serious damage to the economy of Lower Manhattan and had a significant effect on global markets, closing Wall Street until September 17 and the civilian airspace in the U.S. and Canada until September 13. Many closings, evacuations, and cancellations followed, out of respect or fear of further attacks. Cleanup of the World Trade Center site was completed in May 2002, and the Pentagon was repaired within a year. On November 18, 2006, construction of One World Trade Center began at the World Trade Center site. The building was officially opened on November 3, 2014. Numerous memorials have been constructed, including the National September 11 Memorial or Museum in New York City, the Pentagon Memorial in Arlington County, Virginia, and the Flight 93 National Memorial in a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Background Al-Qaeda The origins of Al-Qaeda can be traced to 1979 when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden traveled to Afghanistan and helped organize Arab Mujahideen to resist the Soviets. Under the guidance of Ayman al-Zawahiri, bin Laden became more radical. In 1996 bin Laden issued his first fatwa, calling for American soldiers to leave Saudi Arabia. In a second fatwa in 1998, bin Laden outlined his objections to American foreign policy with respect to Israel, as well as the continued presence of American troops in Saudi Arabia after the Gulf War. Bin Laden used Islamic texts to exhort Muslims to attack Americans until the stated grievances are reversed.
Muslim legal scholars have throughout Islamic history unanimously agreed that the jihad is an individual duty if the enemy destroys the Muslim countries. According to bin Laden, Osama bin Laden bin Laden, who orchestrated the attacks, initially denied but later admitted involvement. Al Jazeera broadcast a statement by bin Laden on September 16, 2001, stating, I stress that I have not carried out this act, which appears to have been carried out by individuals with their own motivation. In November 2001, U.S. forces recovered a videotape from a destroyed house in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. In the video, bin Laden is seen talking to Khalid al Harbour or admits foreknowledge of the attacks. On December 27, 2001, a second bin Laden video was released. In the video, he said, It has became clear that the West in general and America in particular have an unspeakable hatred for Islam. It is the hatred of crusaders. Terrorism against America deserves to be praised because it was a response to injustice aimed at forcing America to stop its support for Israel, which kills our people. We say that the end of the United States is imminent, whether bin Laden or his followers are alive or dead. For the awakening of the Muslim Ummah has occurred, but he stopped short of admitting responsibility for the attacks. The transcript refers several times to the United States specifically targeting Muslims. Shortly before the U.S. presidential election in 2004, in a taped statement, bin Laden publicly acknowledged al-Qaeda's involvement in the attacks on the U.S. and admitted his direct link to the attacks. He said that the attacks were carried out because we are free and want to regain freedom for our nation. As you undermine our security we undermine yours. Bin Laden said he had personally directed his followers to attack the World Trade Center. Another video obtained by Al Jazeera in September 2006 shows Bin Laden with Ramzi bin al Shib, as well as two hijackers. Hamza al-Ghamdi and Wail al-Sheri, as they make preparations for the attacks. The U.S. never formally indicted bin Laden for the 9-11 attacks but he was on the FBI's most wanted list for the bombings of the U.S. embassies in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and Nairobi, Kenya. After a 10-year manhunt, bin Laden was killed by American special forces in a compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan on May 2, 2011. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed the journalist Yoshri Fuda of the Arabic television channel Al Jazeera reported that, in April 2002, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed admitted his involvement, along with Ramzi bin al -Shib. The 9-11 Commission report determined that the animosity towards the United States felt by Mohammed, the principal architect of the 9-11 attacks, stemmed from his violent disagreement with U.S foreign policy favoring Israel. Mohammed was also an advisor and financier of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing and the uncle of Ramzi Yusuf, the lead bomber in that attack. Mohammed was arrested on March 1, 2003, in Rawalpindi, Pakistan, by Pakistani security officials working with the CIA then transported to Guantanamo Bay and interrogated using methods including waterboarding. During U.S. hearings at Guantanamo Bay in March 2007, Mohammed again confessed his responsibility for the attacks, stating he was responsible for the 9-11 operation from A to Z and that his statement was not made under duress. Other Al-Qaeda members in substitution for testimony of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed from the trial of Zakaria's Musuair. Five people are identified as having been completely aware of the operation's details. They are bin Laden, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Ramzi bin al Shib, Abu Turab al Urduni, and Mohammed Atef. To date, only peripheral figures have been tried or convicted for the attacks. 
On September 26, 2005, the Spanish High Court sentenced Abadada to 27 years in prison for conspiracy on the 9-11 attacks and being a member of the terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda. At the same time, another 17 Al-Qaeda members were sentenced to penalties of between 6 and 11 years. On February 16, 2006, the Spanish Supreme Court reduced the Abadada penalty to 12 years because it considered that his participation in the conspiracy was not proven. Also, in 2006, Musu Air, who some originally suspected might have been the assigned 20th hijacker, was convicted for the lesser role of conspiracy to commit acts of terrorism and air piracy. He is serving a life sentence without parole in the United States. Munir al Motasadek, an associate of the Hamburg based hijackers, is serving 15 years in Germany for his role in helping the hijackers prepare for the attacks. The Hamburg cell in Germany included radical Islamists who eventually came to be key operatives in the 9 11 attacks. Muhammad Atta, Marwan al Shahai, Ziad Jara, Ramzi bin al Shib, and Said Bahaji were all members of al Qaeda's Hamburg cell. Motives Osama bin Laden's declaration of a holy war against the United States, and a 1998 fatwa signed by bin Laden and others, calling for the killing of Americans, are seen by investigators as evidence of his motivation. In bin Laden's November 2002 letter to America, he explicitly stated that al-Qaeda's motives for their attacks include U.S. support of Israel, support for the attacks against Muslims in Somalia, support of Russian atrocities against Muslims in Chechnya, pro-American governments in the Middle East being against Muslim interests, support of Indian oppression against Muslims in Kashmir, the presence of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, the sanctions against Iraq. After the attacks, bin Laden and al-Zawahiri released additional videotapes and audiotapes, some of which repeated those reasons for the attacks. Two particularly important publications were Bin Laden's 2002 Letter to America and a 2004 videotape by Bin Laden. Bin Laden interpreted Muhammad as having banned the permanent presence of infidels in Arabia. In 1996 Bin Laden issued a fatwa calling for American troops to leave Saudi Arabia. In 1998, Al-Qaeda wrote, For over seven years the United States has been occupying the lands of Islam in the holiest of places the Arabian Peninsula, plundering its riches, dictating to its rulers, humiliating its people, terrorizing its neighbors, and turning its bases in the peninsula into a spearhead through which to fight the neighboring Muslim peoples. In a December 1999 interview, Bin Laden said he felt that Americans were too near to Mecca and considered this a provocation to the entire Muslim world. One analysis of suicide terrorism suggested that without U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, al-Qaeda likely would not have been able to get people to commit to suicide missions. In the 1998 fatwa, al-Qaeda identified the Iraq sanctions as a reason to kill Americans condemning the protracted blockade, among other actions that constitute a declaration of war against Allah, his messenger, and Muslims. The fatwa declared that the ruling to kill the Americans and their allies, civilians and military, is an individual duty for every Muslim who can do it in any country in which it is possible to do it. In order to liberate the al Qsa Mosque and the Holy Mosque of Mecca from their grip, and in order for their, the Americans, armies to move out of all the lands of Islam, defeated and unable to threaten any Muslim, Bin Laden claimed, in 2004, that the idea of destroying the towers had first occurred to him in 1982, when he witnessed Israel's bombardment of high-rise apartment buildings during the 1982 Lebanon War. Some analysts, including Mearsheimer and Walt, also claim that one motivation for the attacks was U.S. support of Israel. In 2004 and 2010, Bin Laden again connected the September 11 attacks with U.S. 
support of Israel. Although most of the letter expressed bin Laden's disdain for President Bush and bin Laden's hope to destroy and bankrupt the U.S., other motives have been suggested in addition to those stated by bin Laden and al-Qaeda, including Western support of Islamic and non-Islamic authoritarian regimes in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Egypt, Iraq, Pakistan and Northern Africa, and the presence of Western troops in some of these countries. Countries. Some authors suggest that humiliation resulting from the Islamic world falling behind the Western world, this discrepancy rendered especially visible by the globalization trend and a desire to provoke the U.S. into a broader war against the Islamic world in the hope of motivating more allies to support al-Qaeda. Similarly, Others have argued that 9-11 was a strategic move with the objective of provoking America into a war that would incite a pan-Islamic revolution. Planning of the attacks The idea for the attacks came from Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who first presented it to Osama bin Laden in 1996. At that time, bin Laden and al-Qaeda were in a period of transition, having just relocated back to Afghanistan from Sudan. The 1998 African Embassy bombings and bin Laden's 1998 fatwa marked a turning point, as bin Laden became intent on attacking the United States. In late 1998 or early 1999, bin Laden gave approval for Mohammed to go forward with organizing the plot. A series of meetings occurred in early 1999, involving Mohammed bin Laden and his deputy Mohammed ATEF. ATEF provided operational support for the plot, including target selections and helping arrange travel for the hijackers. Bin Laden overruled Mohammed, rejecting some potential targets such as the U.S. Bank Tower in Los Angeles because there was not enough time to prepare for such an operation. Bin Laden provided leadership and financial support for the plot, and was involved in selecting participants. Bin Laden initially selected Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Maidar, both experienced jihadists who had fought in Bosnia. Hazmi and Maidar arrived in the United States in mid-January 2000. In spring 2000, Hazmi and Maidar took flying lessons in San Diego, California, but both spoke little English, performed poorly with flying lessons, and eventually served as secondary, or muscle, hijackers. In late 1999, a group of men from Hamburg, Germany arrived in Afghanistan, including Muhammad Atta, Marwan al-Shahai, Ziad Jarrah, and Ramzi bin al-Shib. Bin Laden selected these men because they were educated, could speak English, and had experience living in the West. New recruits were routinely screened for special skills and al-Qaeda leaders consequently discovered that Hani Hanjar already had a commercial pilot's license. Hanjar arrived in San Diego on December 8, 2000, joining Hazmi. They soon left for Arizona, where Hanjar took refresher training. Marwan al shahai arrived at the end of May 2000, while Attara arrived on June 3, 2000, and Jara arrived on June 27, 2000. Bin al-Shib applied several times for a visa to the United States, but as a Yemeni, he was rejected out of concerns he would overstay his visa and remain as an illegal immigrant. Bin al-Shib stayed in Hamburg, providing coordination between Attara and Mohammed. The three Hamburg cell members all took pilot training in South Florida. In spring 2001, the secondary hijackers began arriving in the United States. In July 2001, Atta met with Bin al-Shib in Spain, where they coordinated details of the plot, including final target selection. Bin al-Shib also passed along Bin Laden's wish for the attacks to be carried out as soon as possible.